So yeah, it, it's kind of funny um, how the the whole Sharknado thing happened. Like the the whole point, like the the whole reason anybody knows about this thing right now is because like it, it became this ridiculously huge deal on Twitter. Uh, and like I remember a couple days before the Sci-Fi Channel promoting it, but it wasn't like they promoted it any differently than their normal original series movies. I mean, All which are excellent. Oh yeah, just the highest of quality. Um. Yeah, yeah. So this thing like. It sort of came out of nowhere, right? I guess I wasn't tracking it that closely. And then all of a sudden it's like, holy crap. Did you say Sharknado? <laughs> and I think the entire internet had that same had that same reaction like within an hour of one another. Did you just mute yourself? It mutes itself when I type. Oh, when you're typing with your your fancy keyboard. My ridiculous keyboard. Your cherry blue switches. Are these blue or are they gray? I thought I had cherry gray switches. Uh, it sounds like blues, but they might be browns. It's amazing that you can actually hear that and be like, oh, yeah, those are cherry The blue, blue has switches. a really distinct, crisp sound to it, where the brown... Then it might be browns bottoming up. That sounds like blues, though. Hello. Hello. Thunder? I can see you, just can't hear you. <laughs> oh, he's on the phone. Okay, give it a second. You're muted, buddy. So in the uh, in the top right hand corner there's a microphone button that's probably red. And if you click that then yeah. Awesome. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can yeah, hear you just fine. Okay, let me hang up this call. Alright, okay. Dan, it looks like this is working, so I'll get on to it. Alright. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, guys, uh, I hope this sounds okay because I couldn't find my earpiece. So. It should be okay. There's probably not going to be a whole lot of feedback. But it's nice to meet you. My name is Russell. Hey, I'm Hi. Sal. I'm sorry, Sal? Yeah, Sal from Geek.com. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so I guess we could uh, we could probably just go ahead and jump right into this. Um, you, uh, you were the screenwriter for kind of one of the crazier things to happen on the Internet this week. Uh, which is the the, the sci-fi original movie Sharknado, right? Uh, and I and I guess I I really wanted to talk to you a little bit about this because this is this is kind of a a new thing really for for a movie that didn't you know it obviously wasn't anticipated to do you know huge uh, you know in any real way, um, but it, but it ended up being you know this this kind of major uh, internet buzz thing really for the last week. Yeah, yeah, it's been crazy in Korea. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, there, we, you know, we did have a certain amount of buzz uh, ever since the poster was released in November, and it's gradually, gradually built up a bit. But there was, there was no way to anticipate something like this. It's just crazy. And it, so it started building from the poster. That's when the sort of uh, the viralness happened. Yeah. yeah um, the, the Asylum and Sci-Fi released the poster at AFN, the American Film Market, last okay. November. And we got an article. I don't remember. I don't remember where it was, but some some some, uh, some uh, publication. Well, that's bound to happen, isn't? It? Hold on a sec. Yeah. Um, some some publication latched on to it and said this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, you know, and it was just a poster. Uh, Sharknado, and it had the, the tornado with sharks coming out of it, and the tagline "Enough said," and uh, and that and that was all there was to it. Um, so so it, it you know it was building in a in a background way since then, um, but, uh, but the way it exploded on Thursday, you know, with, with Farrow and Damon Lindelof and all the people, it was just, it was just crazy. That's great. I had, to, I had to try and turn this phone off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that was bound to happen, wasn't it? Oh, that was hard. So, I, I guess um, I, I wanted to, I guess maybe start from the beginning. How how did this happen? Like like in your mind, I read an earlier interview where you said that you know there was kind of a a pitch for an idea that that you took and 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 worked with. Uh, but but really, you know, how how does something like this happen from your perspective? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> it, uh, I, I mean, yes, yeah, the, the, they came to me. Uh, the asylum originally came to me, and they had this uh, movie they wanted me to write called Shark Storm, which was going to be a very straightforward, you know, action disaster film um, about sharks attacking during a storm. And uh, and that didn't seem like much fun, and it felt like things we can destroy. But at the same time, apparently, like I learned this recently, uh, shark, um, Sci-Fi was uh, developing a similar kind of thing. They were going to call it Sharknado. Um, and so then, uh, a month later, they they came back to me, and um, and uh, and they said, "Well, what we really want you to write is." Sharknado, and they gave me a, a couple of paragraphs uh, of notes, and I said, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> um, and, and, then, and then it was just a matter of, okay, how do I craft a story uh, that fits the idea of uh, a tornado full of sharks? Um, you know, no matter how ridiculous the idea is, you have to find some sort of reality, some sort of logic to give it sense, because if it doesn't make any sense at all, then the humor doesn't work. There has to be some sort of reality. And so I thought, okay, um, what would happen if a hurricane were to hit Los Angeles? So this is a city that, you know, if it rains for five minutes, our streets start to drop. So would we be completely unprepared for something like that? And then, and then once I had that, it was sort of a, a disaster movie structure about what, what would I do if Los Angeles were hit by a hurricane? Um, you know, because I, I have this thing about trying to be prepared for the zombie apocalypse or the giant meteor hitting or whatever. Um, and, and then I, I sort of took it from there. And I think, okay, we've got a hurricane. Now we have sharks. Because if the waters are flooding in from the ocean, there are going to be sharks in it. And, okay, hurricanes spin off tornadoes. So let's add tornadoes. And if the tornadoes start over the ocean, they could suck things up. Because there are, there are actual documented cases of fish falling from the sky uh, after certain meteorological phenomena. You can buy them in them. They were you know, very small fish. Uh, <laughs> so I just took it to the next, you know, perfectly logical and, uh, and thus we have a Sharknado. So I'm I'm glad I was I was kind of afraid at first that I was I was you know gonna maybe insult you uh, you know by by talking about it. But I'm glad that you were the first person to say that. Um, you know, there's this was the the whole point here was to to have fun, you know, and be ridiculous at the same time, and yeah. and that's that was a big thing. Uh, the the whole purpose of this movie really was to to kind of pull that off, and that that ends up you know being exactly what you did. I mean, the the movie was uh, was really fun, uh, but at the same time, there you know most of the of the movie you you spend you know kind of first I guess. You know, like any kind of disaster movie, you kind of put yourself in that position where you think about, you know, how would you handle this? Uh, but it gets hard at times because, you know, there are sharks falling from the sky, and that's that's kind of hard to visualize. Um, but what would you do if sharks were falling from the sky? Hide. Yeah. I would I would curl up somewhere and probably have you know, died. <laughs> on, I I probably would have died on that beach. You know, just to to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't have wouldn't have made it too much further than the beach. I I would grab my shotgun and find a chainsaw. Yeah, <laughs> you're not a survivor, Russ. I'm not a survivor. Not when there's a Sharknado. That's that's pretty much game over as far as I'm concerned. I mean, one of the things that uh, I mean, you know, it, it looks like uh, one of the things I've seen on Twitter is like this is the dumbest thing, and anybody could do this, or <laughs> you could write this. Um, it's not as easy as it looks because you've got to you've got to walk a fine line between open parody. Um, you know, you don't want the characters winking at the audience because then it all sort of falls apart. Right. Uh, the, the, the characters in the moment have to really believe that they're in jeopardy, that this is a real thing happening, or else it stops being funny. Um, so, it, you know, it, it was important to have a, 
I mean, I hate to use the word reality in relation to Sharknado, but it was, <laughs> it was, it was important to have a um, it was important to have a certain internal reality uh, that the characters could be in, and then have fun with it from from our outside perspective. Did you have any interaction with the with the cast, like after they they read the premise or anything like that? Because I know you were involved in another movie while this was being directed. Right, right. I um, in in the beginning, originally uh, when they came to me to to write this, I said, okay, but I have to direct it too. And I said, okay. Um, I don't know if that even ever got to sci-fi. That was that was an asylum thing. Um, okay. But uh, but then at the at the same time that we were developing this, there was another script I was writing that I really wanted to do called A.E. And it was a, it was a more serious science fiction film. And, um, and they were both going to be shot at the same time. And I, I kind of had to make a choice. And since I'd already done one sort of tongue-in-cheek uh, horror disaster movie and using vampire zombies from the hood, which was my first film. Could you do me a favor and just repeat that title? Like, just kind of... Just because I've read it six or seven times, but I really wanted you to say it out loud. Mutant Vampire Zombies from the Hood. I haven't actually seen it yet, but as soon as I saw that in your IMDb, I, I vowed that I would watch it before the week was over. I, I think it's a pretty good movie. Uh, not that many people have seen it. It didn't get wide distribution. But all the comments we get on it from the people who have seen it, they seem to enjoy it. Um, but anyhow, so I wanted to make this a serious science fiction film. And, I, and what I guess now was the, the dumbest career move in, in, in <laughs> <laughs> I chose to go off to the jungles of Costa Rica uh, and direct AE rather than uh, directing Sharknado. There, there, there was also some concern in my mind that I'd written a script for a $100 million film and uh, there was no way we were going to be able to pull it off on a million dollar budget. Um, so I was, I was sort of like, okay, here's my script. I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> and, um, and so I, I was... Uh, I was impressed that Anthony you know, Ferrante was really able to, to capture the spirit of it. You know, I mean, the, the, there was stuff I wrote that there was just no way he was going to be able to do. Um, but that, that was to be expected. And, okay. uh, so I was, I was off in Costa Rica directing another movie. Anthony and I never even met until we were both uh, sharing the same editing room, cutting our respective films. Every once in a while, I'd, I'd look over my shoulder to see see what he'd done to my words. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So AE, you're talking about, I also saw this in your IMDb profile, is uh, uh, Apocalypse Earth with uh, Adrian Paul. Right, Adrian Paul and Richard Rico. Okay. And uh, Costa Rican supermodel Bally Rodriguez. Wow, okay. Um, down, down in Costa Rica, she was actually uh, far more well-known than uh, Adrian or Richard. So. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> All the local press knew about her. I'm not not everyone knew about that. Uh, Adrian and Richard. All right. So one of the questions I was I was told to I, I was promised that I would ask uh, was specifically about the ending, because uh, that's that was one of the things that, that you know specifically got a ton of attention. How did you uh, come to the conclusion that this guy was going to dive into a shark with a chainsaw and then cut his way out? Um, that just seemed like the only logical thing to have happen. Um. This was a clear literary allusion to the Bible, correct? Uh, to, to Jonah and the way. To Jonah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, that's, that's, that's you know, I guess, the impetus in, in, in one subconscious for a moment like that. Uh, that, was, that was one of the moments that I, I had to push for. There was some question if perhaps it was over the top. And uh, I could call it Sharknado. Um, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then actually the way I wrote it, the shark comes... Uh, flying down and hits the ground and bounces towards him because I'd gotten a very strict note from sci-fi that the sharks couldn't fly. They couldn't... <laughs> <laughs> we need to make sure that the shark uh, maneuvers are as realistic as possible. Right. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you need to post that I, memo online. I, I had it that the shark came down, hit the ground, and, and slid towards him. And he turns, grabs the uh, chainsaw off the ground, and turns to the shark just as it engulfs him, and then Anthony changes to have him leap into it, and then I had him, you know, cut his way out, and then grab uh, Nova and pull her out. 
I don't know how that comes to. Other than <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just kind of imagine you sitting and, and writing this, and you know, you, you come to this kind of, you know, this this you know epic conclusion to this to this film, and and you've got you know a chainsaw and a shark, and and it all just kind of comes together in your mind. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that's how it happened. Yeah. So there was uh, there was a lot of talk about a uh, sequel to Sharknado. Right. Um, and then earlier today, it was actually confirmed by Sci-Fi. Um, is this something that you're going to be involved in? They haven't called me yet. Um, and as far as I know, they haven't called Anthony either. Um, you know, if they, if they want us to do it, I think it would be great fun. I saw that they wanted seven in New York. And I'm from New York. I'm a New York City boy, born and bred. And uh, I can think of all sorts of mayhem we could unleash in parks in New York. Um, so I think it would be great fun, but I haven't heard it. So we've caused enough trouble on the West Coast. Now we need yes, to yes. we need to drop sharks in New York City. That's that's definitely a good way to go from there. Did the movie right. have any sort of uh, science consultant, a biologist, or anything like that? A meteorologist, probably. <laughs> a veterinarian, even. A veterinarian. <laughs> it, it, it was all very well researched. Okay. I had a, I had a team of meteorologists and uh, bio meteorologists who specialized in. Uh, in life being sucked up into Tornado. Um, we have a hurricane expert, tornado expert, <laughs> and, um, and didn't listen to a word of it. I didn't Good. ignore it all of them. <laughs> it's uh, funny that you can combine all these real things and get something so surreal, right? Like uh, we, we were sharing around a picture of a really uh, great, uh, what was it called? A, water, uh, spots. a yeah. water spot, yeah, before, from uh, NASA had posted. Oh, as their picture of the day, and it, it it looks like a pretty awesome thing. Like it looks like it could suck up a pretty large animal. Maybe not shoot it out into a city, but right. you know. Right. Well, I I mean since since the movie came out, there have been meteorologists who've gone online and said that water spouts don't suck up uh, marine life, but that's contradicted by the actual verified stories of of fish and other yeah uh, frogs yes. and stuff <laughs> falling out of the ground. So. You know, I mean, the, the, it's tenuous, but um, but there is there is a, a slight connection to reality here, and we just took it as far as we could. There's just enough maybe there to run with. Most of these, uh, so many horror movies and this sort of things are just kind of the the you know the next logical step. You know, like oh, there's a big snake, so now there's a really really big snake, and it's in Lake Placid or or you know what have you. Right, right, and 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 you know, in all fairness, it all goes back. Uh, at least this particular genre, uh, the, the shark film, it all goes back to Jaws, and that's what they did. They yeah. took, you know, great white sharks, which are, you know, 15, 16 feet long, the big ones, and they said, okay, what if there were a 25 foot great white shark? Um, you know, so, I mean, I, I think it's perfectly reasonable to want to compare Jaws and Technado in the same day. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, it's just. You know, and, and then for a big movie like this, uh, where you're where you're trying to have fun with it, you go one step beyond what's reasonable, yes. or, or two or three steps. But <laughs> but you always start with some kind of reality. So when this when this kind of exploded Thursday on Twitter, was this? I mean, this was something that you were probably. Were, were, I mean, like, were you watching at the time as it you know as it was happening, and and just yeah, kind I, of. I had, I had actually never watched the, the the whole film before. I'd seen bits and pieces as they were editing, but I saw it uh, for the first time uh, as it aired, just like everybody else. What was the the just kind of the weirdest thing that had come out of of the internet exploding about this that you've personally seen? Uh, oh well, I mean, for, I mean, for me personally, as a as a filmmaker and a writer um, who has long struggled in obscurity, uh, the the most bizarre thing was Damon Lindelof. You know, that's, that's kind of a, a bizarre moment. And then I responded to him, and he responded back to me, and I thought, wow, you know, that's just, <laughs> you've just entered surreal now. This is, this is a twilight zone. Um, I don't think we have any other audience-based questions, so I guess we could probably uh, we could probably just go ahead and wrap this up. I really appreciate you taking the time to to come and talk about it, and I I genuinely hope that you're involved in the in the sequel because this was uh, 
this was something that you started, and, and it would be very interesting to see you finish. Yeah, it, it would be fun. We'll have to see what happens. Great. Well, best of luck, and it was nice talking to you. Okay, thanks.